Expect me at noon on the 28th. Read the single tear of paper written in chicken scratch that Martin had wheat pasted to his parents' front door. His mother would probably bake her usual boring chocolate pecan pie. It was his favorite. Are you really coming to Thanksgiving this year? Or are you just going to be weird and cause a scene like last time? Amanda, his increasingly dull sister, didn't get what Martin was trying to say five years ago when he set fire to the cornucopia. And she certainly wouldn't get it now. Smoking cigarettes in the driveway, Martin pumped himself up. He waited for his father to come out and tell him to calm the fuck down. Yeah, we'll see about that, old man. The smell of moist turkey, giblet gravy, mashed yams, an annual favorite that Martin could never wrap his head around. And what seemed to be a harvest celebration, field roast wafted in the breeze and crashed across Martin like a Pacific wave. Nice shot, Amanda, but you'll have to try harder than bringing a field roast to Thanksgiving to steal this fox's thunder. Martin punched a door. Peeking into the dining room window of his familial home, he noticed a new silhouette at the table. A young man with less defined features than Martin, but rakishly shaggy hair. Martin thought for a moment about growing his bangs out, but quickly his attention turned to the new body set next to Amanda. She didn't have any friends. This was the girl that listened to the monkeys by the monkeys until she wore out the vinyl and then bought another copy. Whoever this new party was, he had obviously been misinformed about which was the cooler sibling. Martin thought he heard someone say, just leave him at the window. It sounded like his mother, but if she had known he was there, she would have been outside holding a piping hot green bean casserole in the doorway, or something stupid like that. Back at his car, Martin uncovered the gourd that he had stolen from a nearby garden and now buckled into his passenger seat. That'll show him, the fuckers. Dude, you've been outside for like 15 minutes. You want to come inside? Martin grabbed the gourd and took off down the street like a marathon runner on some sort of turkey trot. Whoever the voice in the doorway belonged to, it wasn't anyone he recognized. This wasn't his home anymore. Martin ran until the tears flowing from his eyes had dried against his cheeks. It was just he and his gourd, alone until Christmas.